This is Biology for Grade 11, produced by Tigray Education Bureau, transmitted by Dimsuoyane Tigray National and FM radio satellites and social media, and also FM Makala 104.4. Hello students, I am Gaurumara Mimana. Today we will see on Unit 4 Cell Biology. Here we have two subtopics. The first is types of cell and the second subtopic is part of cell and their function. From this lesson, the students are expected to know what prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells are. To mention the main difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, to explain the key features of fluid mosaic model. Before we start our today's session, let's recall some pointers from your previous lessons, especially about cells. The word cell was first coiled by Robert Hooke in 1665 from a dead core plant shoe. Based on the modern cell theory, cells are the basic structural and functionality of life. Cells come from pre-existing cells, not by spontaneous generation. Cells contain hereditary information that passes from generation to generation or from cell to cell during cell division. All metabolic activities occur within the cell. All organisms or living things, they are composed of one or more, more than one cells. If those organisms are composed of one cell, we call them unicellular organisms. For example, like bacteria, yeast cell, protozoan cells, and others. Whereas those organisms that are composed of more than one cells, they are named as multicellular organisms. For example, like plant cells, animal cells, funguses like mushrooms are multicellular organisms. Having this in mind, let's proceed to address our today's main session, that is the first subtopic, types of cell. Based on whether the cell has true nucleus or not, there are two types of cells prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Students, what do you remember about prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells from your lower grades? Okay, students, let's see the main features and differences between the two types of cells. Both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells are, words are derived from Greek, pro means before, and karyos means nuclear. So prokaryotic cells are cells that have no distinct nucleus, or cells that have no true nucleus. Whereas EU means true, so eukaryotic cells are cells that have a true nucleus, or distinct nucleus. Prokaryotic cells are much smaller and simpler cells. They range from 1 up to 10 micrometer in size, whereas eukaryotic cells are large and much complex cells. They range from 10 up to 100 micrometer in size. Prokaryotic cells, they have no membrane-bounded organelles, whereas eukaryotic cells have membrane-bounded organelles like nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplast, lysosome, Golgi apparatus, and others. Prokaryotic cells have a circular DNA that is not associated with histone protein to form chromosome. However, eukaryotic cells have linear DNA associated with histone protein to form a chromosome. In addition, prokaryotic cells have small ribosome, that is 70S. S stands for sedimentation coefficient, 
that measures the mass of the ribosome. Prokaryotic cells, they have always cell wall made up of from peptide glycan. Some prokaryotic cells, they are photosynthetic. For example, cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. Cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, they have phycocyanin pigment instead of chlorophyll pigment. However, eukaryotic cells, they have large ribosome, that is ATS. Some eukaryotic cells have a cell wall. For example, plant cells have a cell wall that is composed of cellulose. Fungi cells have a cell wall that is made up of from chitin. And algal cells have a cell wall that is mainly composed of glycoprotein. Plants and algae are photosynthetic organisms that have a eukaryotic cell type. Many biologists, they believe that prokaryotic organisms are the first cells that evolved on the Earth, based on the evolutionary point of view, or specifically based on the theory of biochemical origin of life on the Earth. The first true cell that derived from coacervates are named as protobionates. Protobionates are prokaryotic, heterotrophic, unicellular organisms. Prokaryotic cells, they include general bacteria like archaeobacteria, cyanobacteria, and eubacteria. Let's see uh, one by one. Archaeobacteria are the primitive prokaryotics and the oldest organisms on the Earth. Cyanobacteria are the first photosynthetic organisms evolved in the Earth around 3.5 billion years ago. Eubacteria are the ordinary bacteria such as Shigella, Salmonella, Campylobacter, Shirsha coli, and so on. Eukaryotic cells include all organisms in Kingdom Fungia, Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Plantia, and Kingdom Animalia. Endosymbionic theory. Endosymbionic theory is the theory that states about how eukaryotic cells originated. So, based on this theory, the modern eukaryotic cells formed when several primitive prokaryotic cells go together. The plasma membrane of those prokaryotic cells that go together becomes more enfolded and eventually leads into the endoplasmic reticulum of eukaryotic cells. The membrane cell that has endoplasmic reticulum engulfed other smaller cells that are better in respiration to release energy and they evolved into mitochondria. Those cells that contain mitochondria were heterotrophic and evolved into protista, fungia, and animal cells. Some of the cells that have mitochondria, they engulfed other smaller prokaryotic photosynthetic cells, and they evolved into chloroplast. They are autotrophs, and they are the forerunners of plant cell and algal cells. Students, are you with me? If you are with me, let's try to answer the following questions. Question number one. What are the two components of a eukaryotic chromosome? What are the two components of a eukaryotic chromosome? Okay, students, if you say DNA and histone protein, you are right. Question number two, what are phycocyanin pigments? What are phycocyanin pigments? Okay, students, phycocyanin pigments are blue-green colored pigments that are found in cyanobacteria that help us to capture sunlight that is used for photosynthesis. Question number three. Mention at least two differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. I will repeat the question. Mention at least two differences between 
prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Okay, students. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells have a number of differences. If you say two from the number or from the several differences, you are right. So the differences are prokaryotic cells, they have no true nucleus, whereas eukaryotic cells have a true nucleus. Other differences, prokaryotic cells, they have no membrane-bounded organelles, whereas eukaryotic cells have a membrane-bounded organelles like mitochondria. The DNA of prokaryotic cells is circular that does not associate with histone protein to form a chromosome, whereas the DNA of eukaryotic cells is linear that associated with histone protein to form a chromosome and others. Okay, students, here you have homework. There are five multiple choice questions on page 124 up to 125 of your textbook. Write them on your exercise book properly. Do them for next session. Okay, students, let's proceed towards our next subtopic that is part of cell and their function. As we know, cells have different parts. Today, we will mainly focus on cell membrane or plasma membrane. Cell membrane or plasma membrane is a cellular structure that surrounds and encloses the cell, and it is vital in isolating the cell from its environment. Cell membrane can be described as selectively permeable membrane or differentially permeable membrane or partially permeable membrane or semi-permeable membrane. Plasma membrane or cell membrane controls what enters and delivers from the cell. Because of this, it is the traffic of the cell. Plasma membrane uses as cell signaling or it allows the cell to recognize and identify various steps such as hormones, immune system, etc. Plasma membrane also gives a little mechanical support to the cell. When we come to its composition, plasma membrane is mainly composed of a phospholipid bilayer. There are different models that show the structure of plasma membrane. Here under, we will see three models. The first one is sandwich model. This sandwich model was proposed in 1935 by Davizen and Danieli. It says a phospholipid bilayer is sandwiched in between two protein molecules. That means the protein forms the bread of the sandwich, whereas the phospholipid forms the filling or the center of the sandwich. However, this sandwich model does not properly explain how molecules pass across the membrane. The second model is unit membrane model. This unit membrane model was proposed by Robertson in 1959, based on electron microscope evidences to support sandwich model or Davizen Daniel model. This unit membrane model suggests all membranes are essentially the same in their composition. The third model, that is the acceptable model, the model that we use at this time to represent the structure of plasma membrane is fluid mosaic model. Fluid mosaic model was introduced by Singer and Nicholson in 1972. It is the acceptable model as we said before. It states that the membrane is a mosaic of proteins dispersed in the fluid bilayer of phospholipids. That means the presence of different kind of proteins and others shows mosaic and the phospholipid is not static by its nature, it is fluid and it constantly changing. Fluid mosaic model has the following key features. The first one is, it says phospholipid bilayer is the basis of the membrane. The second key feature is plasma membrane has integral proteins. Integral proteins are also called intrinsic and transmembrane proteins. Those integral proteins span or lies on both phospholipid bilayer. They play a role in transporting substance. Those integral proteins, they consist of three major groups of protein. That are channel protein, 
carrier protein and peripheral proteins. Let's see one by one. Channel proteins are integral proteins through which specific ions can pass. Different ions have different channel protein. The second protein is carrier protein. Carrier proteins are integral proteins through which large molecules cross the membrane by facilitated diffusion or active transport. Those carrier proteins that involved in active transports are named as pumps. The third integral protein is peripheral protein. They are also called extrinsic proteins. Those peripheral protein span or lies only in one layer or less than one layer of the phospholipid. Those peripheral protein, they act as enzyme and catalyze a reaction. Other peripheral proteins, they attach the integral protein to cytoskeleton of the cell. Okay, students, let's continue with the other key features of the fluid mosaic model. That is the third one, presence of glycolipid and glycoproteins in the membrane. Glycoprotein and glycolipids are proteins and lipid molecules that are attached with carbohydrate chain. Both glycoprotein and glycolipids, they act as a receptor sites for hormones and drugs. Also, they allow cell-to-cell -cell recognition, mainly by their carbohydrate part. Glycoproteins, they also work in sticking the correct cells together in tissue. The fourth key feature of fluid mosaic model is the presence of cholesterol. Cholesterol reduces the fluidity of the membrane and also works in reducing further escape or entry of polar molecules through the membrane. The fluidity of a cell membrane is mainly influenced by two factors, the amount of cholesterol that it has and the nature of the fatty acid, whether it is saturated or unsaturated. Okay, students, let's do the following questions from the information that you gain from the presentation. Question number one. What is the role of carrier proteins in membrane? What is the role of carrier proteins in membrane? Okay, students, if you say carrier proteins are integral proteins that are used to transport large particles through the membrane, whether by facilitated diffusion or active transport, you are right. Question number two. What is the disadvantage of cholesterol to man? What is the disadvantage of cholesterol to man? Okay, students, the disadvantage of cholesterol is if we take it in an excess amount, it becomes deposited in the blood vessel. So it narrows the lumen, then finally leads for heart disease and stroke, even a complication that you call it atherosclerosis that leads for hypertension. All of you know, hypertension is a silent killer. Okay, students, let's wind up our today's session. There are two types of cells, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Based on endosyme binary theory, eukaryotic cells are evolved from prokaryotic cells. Fluid mosaic model is the acceptable model that we use to represent the structure of plasma membrane. Fluid mosaic models have several key features. This is all about our today's lesson. Next time, we will see on how substance crosses the plasma membrane. Students, let's fight corona by keeping personal hygiene and avoiding social contact. Till next week, bye-bye. <laughs>